today what we will start on is an important area of uh, statistical mechanics important both for physics and chemistry and uh, as I keep telling you that these are fairly regularly taught in most places in the world at least in serious places. Now why these things are important is the following. Uh, till now we have done ideal gases and ideal gas the particles do not interact though they have many interesting uh, properties and particularly useful expressions like entropy specific heat that we use later. However, a system under is interesting because they have interact with each other, they undergo phase transition. An ideal gas does not go undergo phase transition. You plot P V, uh, P against v, 1 over V, you know it just uh, never shows any bend like if I plot P against 1 over V, then remember it is a straight line and this is the that is how it goes ok that is where universal gas constant were found out. In the real world however, when you high temperature it is something like that, but when you go to low, go, low temperature then it undergoes a phase transition and this is gas, this is liquid and then it goes undergoes one more phase transition is the crystalline state. So, these breaks and this is the coexistence are because the phase of the system goes discontinuously from gas to liquid to crystal. An ideal gas which does not interact does not show the phase transitions, it just goes on linearly. When a, uh, people started uh, looking into that, then what the first thing that you find that was noted by Van der Waals that if this is the ideal gas which was known long time, then in a dense gas, when density of gas, I will little bit quantify what is the density because it is very important, then it starts deviating from the A, then it goes like that, but it starts deviating from the ideal gas behavior. So, this is the ideal gas, which is PV equal to RT. this is the real gas. It undergoes low at, at a uh, lower temperature, it undergoes phase transition, but you do not need to talk about it right now. We will talk about it at length, but right now let us see that we are just not that low temperature. We are uh, intermediate temperature, but we start seeing the departure from the ideal gas behavior. As I said, this was observed by Van der Waals and uh, many other people. So, the people then tried to explain this. It was clear very early that this is because of interactions between atoms and molecules. Now, in order to talk of interactions, I need to talk of a separation, length scale between two things. And the way we talk is introduce a dimensionless quantity rho star which is number of particles in a volume V then cube by the molecular diameter and this so sigma is the molecular diameter. So, n sigma cube is kind of a fraction of the volume occupied by molecules. So, this gives you a measure that if I have this kind of molecules and if this is sigma then pi by 6 sigma cube would be the volume each one occupies then you get a, a measure of that. So, in the roasts and roasters are very significant by making it dimensionless we get some very important what is called the convergence. For example, uh, the roaster typically in the liquid is between 0 0.8 to 
or 0.85 to 0.95. Gas is between about 0.1 or so. So, in between these uh, gas and liquid, there is a huge coexistence which really takes you from 0.1 to 0.6 or so. These are very important numbers. Why it is important? Because you now I tell you some numbers like water rho star is 0.76, then astronite trial I think as far as I remember something like 0.85, methanol a little bit more dense, it is about 0.9. So, in a very small, so when you in number density if you look at them, number density this part varies quite dramatically from one liquid to another liquid even of the order of one order of magnitude. But however, when you do the rose star, there is an universality that appears. The universality is that this is that we have a uh, suddenly a dimensionless quantity to characterize the liquid. Okay, now I have a number, I can put okay, this is the density rose star where I have a liquid, this is where it is. No. I do not have to talk of those numbers like 10 to the power 22 or a density of water 10 to the power 23 per cc, those kind of big numbers are really does not make many sense to a scientist, a scientist must make them uh, understandable, uh, uh, something we can grasp, we can kind of uh, think and these rho star also at the same time is a kind of a fraction, is proportional to the fraction of the total volume occupied by the molecules or atoms if I consider them as hard spheres. They are not hard spheres, but there is a big repulsive potential and because there are rough potential you have size and that is why Pauli was uh, fond of saying that, uh, that he created the solid state or condensed matter physics. Because, because of Pauli exclusion principle and all the you have the in uh, hard repulsive part of the potential and uh, solid exists because of that hard repulsive part of the potential. Pauli was known for making many, many interesting jokes, okay. So, this is an important thing that the number density. Now, as I just said in the ga ideal gas which we derived last uh, two, three lectures that we have these uh, expressions, they are very nice expressions, but they are not, they cannot explain phase transitions. Phase transitions exist as Pauli also said called condensed matter because particles interact, you and me, we exist because we interact. For some people it does not bother that whether you exist or not or you know or why you exist, but for some crazy people it is important to know why you exist. So, these uh, teaching in India which is a very what based, uh, I remember our school uh, uh, questions were always what is this famous for, what is the capital of uh, Hawaii or whatever, uh, what is the capital of Madagascar. Uh, so, what are the important uh, goods made in uh, Nigeria, it is all about what and you go very far by just doing what. We do not say why uh, and why this, why uh, these things happen, why you get this particular fruit in that uh, Mediterranean. Then come even deeper level is how, uh, how it happens. So, see so you know Feynman's you must be joking. Mr. Feynman, there is a very interesting chapter you should read. Richard Feynman's father was a salesperson. He wanted to make his son a scientist. So, whenever he had time, he was at home, he would make scientific toys and then he would take his son into the park, their little uh, track, mountainous region, he would go and he would. Uh, teach them, he would teach them this is the bird, that is the, this is bird, that is bird and then I think Feynman was always a show up, right. So, he showed up little bit and then whole locality 
every father and mother started taking their children out for trekking and then they all knew names of every bird or everything and they now in turn asked fine men, hey do you know the name of that bird and by the time fine men forgot it. Then fine man's father told him a very important thing which fine man said was important all his life that the name is not important. Uh, it is important that what it looks like, it is important this kind of bird does this kind of things and you find in this area. So you know many of our education system is this what based, uh, we do not even go to why and then of course how is little part. So, Coming back, we are now going to ask a few questions, why a phase transition takes place and how do we explain that. Hmm. So this is a long and very just like chemical reaction dynamics which has got probably one of the most celebrated theories and most celebrated Nobel laureates coming uh, from Rudy Marcus, uh, Harsbach Pagliani or uh, Amit Zuel and many others. More oh, recently, uh, essentially the the paper of 1976, which gave Levitt and uh, Warshall Nobel Prize, was also essentially doing enzyme kinetics. Hmm. Now, in physics, and also part in physical chemistry, this equally respected and celebrated is the phase transition and the condensed matter. So, because that's how materials form and now that is how we understand how something forms. Then of course, thermodynamic properties are important like compressibility as we discussed and other resistivity. Then come of course the electronic properties which somehow people are more focused on but you have to make the material first before you study electronic properties. So basically why and how the phase transition. occurs the gas liquid liquid solid. So, this is the question that we will be asking uh, today and next uh, few lectures. Now, as I just told you how do you go about it? I told you that ideal gas does not have a phase transition because there is no interaction between them. So, phase transition is a consequence of intermolecular interaction. Actually, everything is a, a interesting is in, in intermolecular interactions. So, let us first de define what is what I mean by intermolecular interaction. The simplest one, or one of the simplest one, is intermolecular interaction Vr. R is the separation between two molecules. I have the simplest thing in mind. There are two molecules, and the R is the separation from center to center. Vr against R. And I have this is the one a short term part of that. This I call molecular diameter sigma. This is harshly repulsive. Remember Pauli's comment. This is because of electronic uh, overlap of the electrons, electron density. This is an attractive part. Hard sphere itself is a very interesting system and um, in, in, in statistical mechanics huge amount of study goes on just to study the hard sphere part. Whether hard sphere part is not really realistic like this is the this potential called Leonard Jones potential explains properties of noble gas very well. That is what the first kind of things that uh, people uh, developed. So, this VR is written as these are the things I will be using. This is called Leonard Jones 6 to 12 potential. This is the repulsive part that is very short range and uh, diverging. And this is the attractive part. This is the part which is given by this minus sign here. So, this is the sim one of the simplest uh, interaction potential. Okay. Now, with phase transition due to interactions, and if I, this is a kind of interaction potential I am having, and that is what I was mentioning to you. Even at a two body potential, I cannot solve Newton's equation, I can reduce it to a quadrature and three body I cannot solve at all. That is why we need to go to statistical concepts. 
I am now keep a little bit of that upstairs, but then I am going to do the rest of the, the uh, how do you go about doing statistical mechanics. So, I keep V R equal to, let me just keep this one, that is enough. Okay. So, we cannot uh, do this. Now, I, how do I start about it? I want to consider a n number of molecules at volume V at temperature T. I want to work in canonical ensemble and now I want to calculate the partition function of this quantity. So, statistical mechanics tells me if I want to calculate free energy, I want to calculate the equation of state pressure versus density, I have to work in one of the ensembles. Microcanonical ensemble in this case is incredibly difficult that because the constraint of constant energy does not lead, lead me to any uh, easy, is not amenable. So, canonical ensemble we can make some progress, grand canonical also we can make progress, but this is the one historically as I told you before you work. And canonical particle means I have a system with a to total number of particles n which are interacting among themselves with this potential in, uh, the, I put them in a volume V and at temperature T. Now, if I increase, I decrease the volume or decrease temperature, the system from gaseous state would go to liquid, then to solid. And the, how do I describe the sequence of phase transitions? How do I decide that at what temperature or density a gas, water for example, we know uh, at 100 degree centigrade, uh, and atmospheric pressure goes from uh, steam to li uh, liquid water and then 0 degree centigrade goes to ice. What determines it? What determines this temperature 100 degree centigrade or 0 degree centigrade? What determines water goes into hexagonal open structure? What determines iron goes to FCC and what determines sodium goes to BCC? And what determines when you form a nanoparticles? What are the size of the nanoparticles? Uh, so, these are the questions and you can understand this when you start asking why and how life does not remain that simple anymore. It is probably much easier to mix A and B or some sample together in a solution put in a bomb. I know one of my colleagues puts in a bomb, I know what the, actually some kind of uh, glass jar and they re increase the temperature and they get nanomaterial and they get a paper which is not a bad way to live actually because um, here you have to think and hard, but I told you always that the famous story, one guy was uh, trying very hard to climb Mount Everest and then one of his colleague was lazy and he said why, 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 why do you want to climb this one, you know, you know you can be easily like me lying on bed, why do you want to climb that, that his great answer was that no it, it is there, it is just it is there so I have to climb. Now, I now start this climbing, so you know we have already introduced the notation, I am always a bit A about 3n or 3 by 2, I think 3n, then I have to integrate, remember I have to integrate over all the positions. Then I have to integrate all the momentum. If you have any problem, you please let me know because I have this constraint here, this is the Hamiltonian, right? And Hamiltonian is sum over, they all, I assume all of them same mass, I equal to 1 to n. Then I have interaction potential U and particle interaction potential that depends on R. This is this is a notation I told you, which means it is dependent on n particles. And U interaction potential then is depending on U or V. I I tend to I like U because V most of the time is not, we reserve for velocity u i j r i j i less than j. 
this notation or you can put i j both from 1 to n. If you do that, you have to put half to avoid uh, double counting. So basically, this is my system n. One, two, three, four, five, and so I am having interaction between one and two, two and three, one and three, one, four. This, all these interactions. So this u is sum of all the interactions. Okay. The kinetic energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Now we immediately note one thing that in a classical statistical mechanics, quantum is difficult. But in classical statistical mechanics, this integration of the momentum is a trivial path because these are nothing but Gaussian integral which we did before and it does not overlap with uh, position at all. So I can do the A integral path, uh, momentum path and then write rest as another function which then would involve integration over the interaction potential, okay. This is the uh, game. So, so basically this is the, let us little bit summarize, fully microanalysis of interacting many body uh, systems that we are trying to do, starts with a given intermolecular potential, in our case we are assuming it to be Leonard Jones, does not matter, you can do anything you want. What we are going to develop is a graph theory of liquids and gases. This was introduced by Joseph Mayer and then it went into quantum. Actually many of the quantum things that people do, um, R cell expansion, then the kind of many uh, cluster expansion, couple cluster and all the kind of things. Uh, it, it was uh, basically started in StatMac. Even before uh, all the Feynman graphs and all these things happened, it, it happened in 1937 that Joseph Mayer. Uh, formulated the theory that we are going to describe. It is a very pretty theory, very nice and beautiful theory and has tremendous insight into it. We will derive a um, expression of the partition function, we will derive the molecular expression for virial coefficients in terms of intermolecular potential, we will go towards the radial distribution function and microscopic nature of gas liquid condensation. It has been uh, attempted by many people to go to liquid to solid that does not work. So why? But it gave rise, this theory gave rise to the most successful theories of liquids that we know today uh, that are in, in all the textbooks. So this is the partition function and what if we can evaluate that partition function, I can get the free energy. And if I can get the free energy, I can get the pressure as a pressure as function of volume and that was the that is called the equation of state and that should show the phase transitions in the presence of interactions. And then this Hamiltonian which is to be integrated over with the Boltzmann factor is uh, given by kinetic energy plus total potential energy and total potential energy is here and this is another notation that we use where you already put that. I show you have a 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, then 2, 3. 2, 4, you do not have 2, 1 because you have this constraint that uh, j has to be greater than i. So the one that comes later has to be bigger than, that is a way to arrange. This kind of arranging we do in, uh, in theoretical research repeatedly everywhere, okay now. So this is what I have been telling that we now do that, uh, the full thing in full glory and this integration is that I can now carry out that we did in monatomic gas, ideal monatomic gas, this is exactly. So in ideal monatomic gas this part is 0 because molecules do not interact with each other. Then I only have this integral to do and that is what it comes here and that is what de Broglie wavelength by taking uh, H, yeah check me on that, I always remember H, okay H bar but okay and that go in there and uh, de Broglie wavelength, so in 1 over n factorial lambda to the power 3 n. But main important thing that, that set aside, main important then the effect of interactions is take, uh, in the Zn. We are following in toto Mayer's 1937 notation. This is called the configuration integral or from Mayer's configuration integral. Some things in the our uh, science I get uh, less credit. And uh, as I was telling you that in the folklore, 
and the, in terms of the huge contributions, another person we ha hardly talk about is Willard Gibbs, who single-handedly did so much. Uh, similarly, the one person, Mendeleev, that is considered to be, we do not uh, celebrate enough. Another person who did his enormous amount of contribution is Joseph Mayer. Okay. So now, this is the, then I am going to play certain tricks is the following. I notice that this quantity which is sum in the exponent, now sum in the exponent can also be written as a product, right. Sum in the, here you understand now that this is e, u and u is the sum, so sum in the exponent is nothing but a product, okay. So now and the product is there uh, all in all or in all these things there n into n minus 1 by 2, correct? Okay. So, this is, is I, I can write that quantity as that quantity, right? Okay. Now, now comes a very important thing that look at this thing now, e to the minus beta u and look at this my potential. So, when r goes to infinity, then if u r goes to 0, then this quantity goes to 1 and this is, I will now decompose that. When I decompose these things, I will find that a very large number of terms comes in. So, so this is a problem that is why I introduced a mere f function, but let me go through this. So, so we will go to this now. So, U i j, mm. okay. Now, uh, this is the uh, sum over all the particles, which I am now writing as product of e to the power beta u i j and i j. Okay. This then here the difficulty I face, I am telling you if I keep it like that, these integrals here does not converge. So, Mayer then did the following trick, Mayer and uh, listen carefully, what Mayer did, he said okay, I it, this is the, this is the difficult part, I introduce the function f which is the deep function. Now, if I do that function, then this simple mathematical trick means that I have to replace e to the power minus beta u r i j here. This is a beautiful trick actually, it is two deep uh, things that it, it does and as I told you, this is essentially the, uh, the start of the graph theoretical language in physics and chemistry. You go, you bring this here. Now, this simple uh, trick allows the following advantage, u r i j goes to infinity here and e to the power u r i j goes to 0, but however, when u r i goes to r goes to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 1. However, if I take minus 1 out, then when r goes to 0, this uh, r repulsive part of the potential, u r i j goes to infinity e to the power minus beta uh, and goes to 0 like here and it goes to minus 1. But when r i j goes to 0, then uh, this goes to 0, this goes to 1, then it goes to 0. So, by this transformation, you are removing the divergence, okay. And this is, allows a systematic decomposition of partition function, which is, is fairly trivial, but uh, we will see how it goes to graph theory.